Yuki and Jujitsu Sensei Yoshi I'll never yawn until I die All the things I've learned Makiwara and Zaizen Are the blessings I'll teach you Join me each week as I train with different jiu-jitsu instructors and world champions. Two things are bound to happen. Number one, I will get submitted. And number two, both you and I will learn a thing or two. Rolling, 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 I'm Budo rolling, Jake, rolling, and this is Rolled Up. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rolled Up. I'm Budo Jake, and I'm joined here with Sean Williams. Rolling, 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 he has his own school, uh, Henzo Gracie, Los Angeles, and he also does commentary for us on the uh, Gi Worlds, the No Gi Worlds, and all the other live broadcasts that we do. Sean, welcome. Hey, thank you. Pleasure to be here. So how's your new school going? Oh, it's going great, yeah. Uh, we're still doing a little bit of uh, finishing up on the construction on the front end, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy. We got lucky with the space, and I'm lucky with the students that I have, and it's growing like crazy, and so, yeah, very, very lucky, yeah. And whereabouts is it? It's on uh, Wilshire Boulevard. It's kind of in a Hancock Park, Koreatown area, so, you know, the, the, uh, the exact address is 4201 Wilshire Boulevard, yeah. Okay. And uh, you teaching gi and no gi there? Yeah, we teach, uh, I have gi classes, no gi classes. We teach Muay Thai kickboxing. We're just starting our children's martial arts program, so, mm -hmm. so I'm excited for it to all take off. Right. And the URL? is uh, right now it's HenzoGracieLosAngeles.com. Okay. You can go on there, it's kind of a temporary swipe site. Uh, the actual school's name is Five Star Martial Arts, mm -hmm. but the jiu-jitsu division is, you know, we're an associate or affiliate of Henzo Gracie. Okay. So. Now some of the guys might not know who you are, but your reputation, I think, precedes you in that you're a very detail-oriented instructor. Where does that come from? It came from the top for you know, myself and actually all of my teammates, you know, it, uh, Hen that's the way Henzo taught when we, when I started there and back in <laughs> October 96, you know, 14 years now, holy crap. But, uh, you know, that's how he always taught. He taught, it was very detailed. Um, there was the, the process of explaining why you would do a move, not just like, hey, here's an arm lock, but like why you would do it that way what would happen if you didn't do that that way or what would happen if you know the guy got out and so there was this kind of completeness even with one move so you he really taught us to understand the whole move but like in its entirety not just oh here's how you do an arm lock mm -hmm. so it was pretty impressive you know we was pretty lucky that way and when did henzo come to america he came, you know, the first time I saw him fight was in the World Combat Championships in like, I think that was October of 95. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw an ad in Black Belt Magazine that he and Craig Kukuk had a school. So I went to visit in the summer of 96 and I'm pretty sure that's about the time that he kind of got there permanently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I met him there and then I was hooked. You know, mm -hmm. he's such a nice guy. So I decided to move to New York, you know. So you were one of his first students? Uh, there was probably, you know, when I was there, it was probably maybe 50 to 70 students already, you know, for in the New York area, maybe 100, I'm not really sure, but, you know, Matt, Matt Sarah was a blue belt right when I started and uh, got his purple belt shortly after that, and Matt and his brother Nick Sarah too, they, were, they both kind of went through the belts together. Uh, Rodrigo came out, Rodrigo Gracie came out shortly after I was there, Ricardo Almeida was just at the end of his purple belt stage, he got his brown belt shortly after I, I was there. Um, and, uh, How about John Danaher? Yeah, John Danaher and I started at about the same time. Okay. Yeah, we kind of moved, we moved up together, you know, mm -hmm. so that was pretty cool. It was always, he was always around. We always trained um, every day, you know, after the first couple of months, we got hooked into training every day and then just, that was it. And uh, so he, he and I are uh, kind of colleagues, I guess, you know, we got our black belts on the same day. Mm -hmm. We trained a lot together. We kind of went over material together. He, 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 he was kind of one of my big influences too, because he would always look at tapes and, and stuff that I thought was like, oh, well, it's kind of corny at the time, you know, but he would look at it and then, and then figure out how to use it in jujitsu. And then as soon as I kind of saw like, wow, he's using stuff from like Sambo and, and things like that. And he's making it work for what we do. I should do the same thing. So then that's when I really started studying. You know, Hensel was very open with that too. So, because mm -hmm. he's just a genius, you know, John. So. Right. When I think back of some of these early students like you and John and the Sarahs, 
Is, do you think Henzo's teaching the same way now as he taught you guys in the beginning? Uh, they've got great teachers in New York now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Igor and uh, Igor Gracie and Gregor Gracie, and um, they got a slew of other great teachers there. Right. So, and and and, and John's kind of a you know he 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 teaches a lot of classes there also. So I'm sure that they're all teaching very similar ways. You mm -hmm. know, because they're all great guys. They're all they they were there. Uh, Igor came up when he was a brown belt and uh, was there for quite a while before I moved to LA. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we were good, good friends and training partners, and I, that, that, that it just rubs off on you, you right. know. Like that, those details rub off on you. Yeah. So I, I think that that's how Henzo's standard is: is to be very de detail oriented and mm -hmm. to, to explain why, and not just be like, "Here's an arm lock." Right. You know. So uh, yeah, I think so. But that's kind of a pattern that I've seen before. A, a famous Brazilian will come to America. A lot of students will be attracted to him, and then after a couple of years, he'll build up his academy and have some maybe other instructors teaching there, and then he'll go off and maybe you know, spend a little more free time or open up other academies. Yeah. It seems like often that first core group is really lucky. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I consider myself lucky, but, you know, you, just because I got to learn from him, but, but you know, I think if, if that teacher does his job well, and which I think Henzo did, you, he makes this group of guys that then they take it and they give it to the next generation you know mm -hmm. like you know um for instance you know john danaher teaches the day classes there he came up with we came up together he teaches the early morning and the noon classes i mean and you know now the generation instead of hey i'm learning directly from henzo they're learning directly from john and you know if if you know if you know John, like you know Henzo did his job well because this guy is now considered like one of the best teachers on the planet, mm -hmm. you know? Um, there, 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 it's no accident that George St. Pierre goes to him. It's no accident mm -hmm. that Frankie Edgar's there every Monday. It's no accident that Ricardo's there every, every, every Monday, you know? And mm -hmm. Matt had him at his last fight. There's, that's not an accident, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I think that that's a direct correlation to how Henzo did his job. I think he deserves to have a little break, you know. He was there every day, day in, hours in, hours out, teaching us how to teach. And, and, he, he, and that's another thing I think he did a little bit differently is he didn't just say, okay, Sean, go teach class. When I taught class, he was there to watch me teach and, and would give me feedback. And so he's, it's, he was teaching me not only jujitsu but how to teach and you know, what the importance of, of relaying that information and giving back that information is. So, mm -hmm. if, yeah, if a, if a teacher do, it doesn't do that, if they just, hey, here's, yeah, I made my 10 guys, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, that, I think that that's like, oh, man, I got shorted, shorted in on the stick on the next generation. But a guy like him that kind of walked us through teaching, and mm -hmm. then I, I think that every, that every generation benefits, you know, because we're able to relay that information plus any new information that we've gained with the new time. So right. I think it's all right, you know, it's all right. Do you think that uh, American students benefit more from having a native English speaker? Uh, yes and no. Depends on who it is. You know, that's the other thing about, uh, you know, I'm just, Henzo, 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 but the guy's a freaking genius, you know? Like, when he came to the States when I first met him, his English was okay. It wasn't good. But the, he read like, you should, any time he got a chance to read, he was always asking John questions about English um, and didn't speak Portuguese in the academy. Like if, if a, he could, all, you know, English, 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 he crammed it down his throat. And man, he's probably got better English than me. I'm yeah. sure he knows. <laughs> you know? I agree with you know? Me too. And, you know, and, but that, that's where you see like, okay, this guy not only like, he didn't just come to teach jujitsu. He came to teach jujitsu, and he knew, hey, these guys are English-speaking, native English-speaking students. I need to be able to relay it in terms that they can understand. And and I want he wanted to be as detailed as he could be in Portuguese. So he learned English and learned how to, you know. And I think that that makes a difference. I mean, obviously, if I wanted to go to another country and teach, it, it, it's actually a, a funny funny that you might ask that is I, one time I was in Brazil and uh, Fabio Leopold and I were having a drink after the tournament and and he said you know Sean what the sorry thing is is that if you came here to open a school you would have almost no students and, and he was like because you know there's that barrier of 
you wouldn't be able to break, like you are an amazing teacher in English, but if you can't speak Portuguese fluently like you can in English, you can't, you can't describe it the same way. Even if I wanted to, to do that, if I had to do that, I would have to learn Portuguese inside and out. And that's what Henzo did. He learned English inside and out. Ricardo Almeida, mm -hmm. you try to stump that guy. You have yeah. to look in a dictionary to stump the guy mm -hmm. on an English word. He's going to, you know, the, and that's what I mean. It comes from the top, you know. That, Henzo set the precedent of, of e eliteness, and we had to live up to it. And uh, I think he did a good job of, of, of not promoting or being tough on promotions until we lived up to that. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, you're, you're now, now, it's, now it's time. Right. Well, Sean, I think it only makes sense to start out with your guard. Sure, let's look at... Uh what it is exactly, and maybe the, the, how to get there. One, one way to how to get there. How's that sound? Okay. Sorry. Okay. So it's close guard variation, and uh, I need to have your arm on this uh, right here, right? Mm -hmm. it, I need to have your arm in an Uma Plata position. So I, I wish I had Jedi mind trick because I would tell you put your arm there, but I don't, right? Okay. So we're gonna have to control your posture, especially if guys are two hands on biceps. You know, they just start to get their posture, so. We'll pummel twice. One pummel is just to get your head, right? Because I'm gonna pull down on your head. This hand will most likely go back to the inside. Unfortunately, that just happens. The harder I pull and the harder you push, the more when we get this, uh, this underhook, or this overhook rather, excuse me, in, the faster you fall down. So when there's that tension, you tend to fall down when I move the hip. So this arm goes to the mat because of that tension, right? Mm -hmm. Now the guard comes when we're on our side. There's no flatness on this guard. I wanna make sure that I get my hip angle right away. We get the hip angle by moving our hips out you know, one or two different ways. One is you can straighten your leg and push down on your thigh while I point my feet the other side. The other way is actually to put my foot on your hip. Okay? Well, I wanna avoid putting the foot on the floor because every time you put the foot on the floor, you see now your knee is free. Mm -hmm. So you get these good guys that are good at jumping the knee through the middle. Mm -hmm. So I try to avoid using my foot on the floor in the closed guard. Half guard we use it, but not, not on, the, on the, the closed guard. So once I have your arm here, we've moved out to the side, I'm gonna bring my knee up your back, right? We wanna make sure that the, we bring the knee up the back near the spine. If I bring the knee up here nice and wide, it leaves a lot, yeah, you, you can feel how loose it is. Mm -hmm. So I wanna bring the knee up the back pretty tight, like I'm trying to keep my knee in your spine. Then my right hand's gonna go underneath my right knee. And there's several grips, right? If you're not driving into me, you can grab your own knee, or my, your own shoulder rather, right? But it, most of the time, if you've been here before, you're gonna drive your head in, right? Yeah, and that flattens me out. So ideally we like to make, or I like to make a frame. And once we make a frame, we worry, we stress more about the frame than, than like, I, I don't worry about my leg holding you tight, I'm worried about where my frame is. So. My right hand's gonna face away, and this hand's gonna face me, so that we make a, a gable grip with a left elbow framed at 90 here. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, what I, I wanna keep your head out. So if I keep your head out by keeping the elbow 90, we're good. If I straighten that, you're able to weave your head right underneath, and yeah, you're back in. Mm -hmm. this, is not a, this is not a good position where I'm holding your head. I wanna make sure that your head stays outside of the lock, and we have that frame here. Okay. If I, if I also, if I turn my hands over like this, it's really weak. You'll be able to drive through that frame. So we want to make sure that frame is, is set with that gable grip. Again, if, if you've got hands on biceps, we'll just use this entry today. A lot of different entries. So I, one is to gain control of the head. The second one is to get my overhook position. Bring, bring the knee up nice and tight. I get your head out of there and I make my frame. And that's really what the Williams guard is. Mm -hmm. And then the attacks just stem from there. Mm -hmm. And why do you prefer the Williams guard as opposed to a traditional omoplata position? Um, you know, that it's stick, it's, it's, what would you say? It's more sticky, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you, you're, you, I'm clamped down on your shoulder, so really there's, it's very hard to make your posture. It's hard to drive your head in. It keeps that gap so I can bring the foot over easier. If I want to go to omoplata, I can go to omoplata white with space mm -hmm. and not flexibility, you know, pulling your foot to your face. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it just gives you a little bit longer of a time to attack and it gives you more options to attack. Okay. You've got your head away so you can get triangles and omoplatas and all kinds of kimuras and every, all, all this stuff out, right, you know? Cool. Can I give that a shot? Yeah. 
So the first thing we're going to do is when I have your the hands on the biceps, this hand's going to pump on her to get my neck. Because since I'm trained, I know that I'm going to get inside control over here. Mm -hmm. When you pummel this one under, we're gonna move our hips out to yep to the right. You're gonna punch this elbow over the top, and now this hand's gonna go around the outside of your knee. Yep. When you lock the frame, we're gonna make sure this hand is turned towards me, this hand is turned over. You wanna focus on a 90 degree bend on this elbow, which will seem a bit weird, but this, this is more important than, than, than everything else except for your palms right here. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see like naturally, once you put this elbow down to the mat, like how heavy it is up. Mm -hmm. And should I focus on pinching my knees together? This frame should hold your knees down. Okay. Yeah. So I don't need to worry about too much tension. In nah, you want to be relaxed. You know, the more relaxed you are, the you know, obviously, the longer your muscles will last. So it's more about framing and, and bone structure than oh, I gotta stress out on on the inside of my legs. Because to get those inside of your legs strong, you're gonna have to be Suzanne Summers. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to do all those crazy exercises. Right. So just keep this frame 90, and it keeps me away. So see, my head is. It's out of here. Now my left leg is just kind of floating here. Is that it, okay? It's gonna float there until you're ready to go. You okay. know, I because uh, there's several things like, you know, you, you can arm lock me, you can triangle me. If you're gonna go for triangles, and you're gonna bring it through, mm -hmm. so that it's now it's in a very aggressive position here. Okay. So that's you know, and you square up and you triangle me. Okay. So for the rest of the information, what are people gonna have to do? They're gonna have to get the DVD. <laughs> okay. When and if it ever comes out. <laughs> I'm fooling. There's no DVD. It, there's none. It's like Bigfoot. There's pictures of the Yeti, but no one knows if it really exists. <laughs> you know, there are two main groups of, of BGJ guys. Some guys are awesome competitors, and there's some guys like you and John are, are more known for your teaching ability. How important is that in, a, in choosing a school? You know, should I look for the, the good instructor, or should I look for the competitor, or is it possible to get both in one? Um, I think it's possible to get both in one for sure. Uh, but um, uh, I, I think that as a student, you know, it's all relative to the goal of the student. Um, obviously, if you want to be very successful, both have their pluses and minuses, right? I mean, you need to learn the technical side of jiu-jitsu. So because it's so technical, you know, it's, it's nice to learn from somebody that really breaks down the fine details of every technique. I think that makes learning much, much easier. Mm -hmm. um, learning from a, a, a gifted competitor they, they might be able to teach you things that a gifted teacher may not be able to, you know, the, how to prepare yourself mentally for a tournament or, or so forth and so on. But um, I think it all is dependent on the student and the teacher, you know. Um, most of the time, I, I think te the, the good teachers are good teachers because, A, they don't, you know, either they don't have the desire to compete, they just feel like, oh, it's, it may be irrelevant to, to compete if I don't want to do it. You know, they either know themselves very, very well uh, and say, I don't have to do that, you know. Um, or, or there's some where they, they either they, they, there may be some fear there that they don't want to, oh, they don't want to test themselves or, or so forth and so on. But um, so I think it's dependent on, on the student, what they want to get from the guy. Because you can get great from either one. You know, I think it's easier to make sure that you have uh, an instructor that's detail orientated, knows jujitsu inside and out, and most most importantly, cares about the student. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most overlooked thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have the best teacher in the world, but if he doesn't care about the student, um, then that student's gonna have a hard time succeeding. You know, they need to love teaching, and. Uh, whether they're detailed or not, if, if they love to teach, it'll show and it'll make learning easier and more fun. PlutoVideos.com, right. the establishment in martial arts products, has made shopping online for all your gear and equipment needs a breeze. If you're in the market for a new training gi, instructional book or DVD, fight gear, fitness equipment, PlutoVideos.com has got you covered. So, whether you're looking for that certain something or just want to browse our incredible inventory of over 9,000 products, log on to BudoVideos.com and search, shop, and save. Sean, what's uh, one of your favorite butterfly guard passes? Well, uh, I'll tell you, it's a you know, pass that one of my students called the ladder pass. It's, a, it's using your legs. So, you know, if I, if I could show you, that'd be awesome. Uh, ho hopefully it'll give people out there, I, I, I think some people use their legs like this, but it'll hopefully give you, you know, the guys watching this and you some, some like, oh, wow, I never thought about using my legs like that before. 
Um, so let's check it out, yeah? So the situation comes when uh, your back's flat on the mat and I've already got my, myself into a good butterfly guard position. I'm gonna make one underhook. Doesn't matter what, what the other arm does, right? I don't care if it's over or whatever. Okay. I'm gonna make sure that I bring my head all the way up above yours. So my, I'm gonna bring my, my hips up high, right? Now, from this position, you can or, or you don't have to. It's really relevant to how you like to do it. I can use my hands as post, or I can put my head as a post, right? So I keep your head down. Mm -hmm. The underhook side, my right side, is gonna go first. I'm gonna bring my legs up on top of both of your legs, and it's gonna make your legs kind of sticky. So if I push down with my right hook, see how it pulls your legs out of the way? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to get is your left knee, your, excuse me, your right knee just below my hips. Once that happens, I'm gonna use my left leg to push your hips out of the way, and I got a really nice guard pass, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can settle right down and in, and we're in cross side. I've got my underhook, we're all ready to go. The cool thing about that is you have my upper body controlled the whole time. Yeah, your upper body's flat, and then I'm gonna use my legs to get rid of your legs, so I have my hands free too. So right. you have one hand out here for balance, one underhook, so that when you pass it across side, there's not much of a scramble, mm -hmm. and it works pretty well. Sometimes you're gonna have to flip your legs a little bit. So when you guys get in there, when you get in there, Jake, you're gonna sometimes, like, say you're having a hard time putting this foot over. Mm -hmm. You're gonna turn your hips and then turn it back. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to get that shin over both shins. The key is to get my right foot over both of your shins. And you're gonna make a hook, and then that, now the key is to push down towards the floor, which removes part of your legs. As Soon as I feel your right knee past my, my hip line, I'm gonna use this left knee to push, and I'm gonna get my right leg out of the way and moves your hips to the floor, and you're able to get to the cross side. Do you have any worries about X guard or half guard or anything when you get so high up? Uh, no, because of the leg work. Okay. So if you feel, if I feel that you've captured my, yeah, and you start shooting that through, when you leg work, see it's off. Uh-huh. It goes right out. So it's really kind of quite tricky. Right. The, the legs will feel like they're there until you shoot the leg and then, mm -hmm. Uh, and then it's gone. If you want to think uh, a good concept to think about for the future, like, because it's like, what? The, a good concept to think about for the future is anytime that there's a lock, it's going to be from, it's going to be from your knee down, right? Half guard, everything's going to be from your knee down. So if this part of your leg is gone, there's no, there's no lock. So by moving that part of the leg out of the way with leg work, you're free. You're free. Mm -hmm. you're free. And I use this from everywhere, mm. everywhere. I use it from all over the place. Mm -hmm. It seems to do me well. Cool. Can I give that a shot? Yes. So I've got butterfly guard. You're going to be up. And you're going to put your head right on the mat. That's it. Now, your goal is to put your right foot right on top. Yep. You're going to push to the floor, which feel that slide out. Mm -hmm. Once that slides out, I want you to kick this knee through, and you've passed. Very nice. Now, if you can try when you kick this through to keep your hip up on my hip instead of the floor, it's gonna make it so I can't face you. Okay. So it's gonna save a little bit of a scramble. That's what you're talking about, just raising up this That's leg? fine, yeah. Either leg is fine. If it's this left knee that lands there or the right knee. Okay. But another concept to remember is when you're passing the guard, if the knees are facing away from where you pass, Again, no more of me putting in your, doesn't matter what I know to put you in the guard, it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to turn the back. Okay. Or I'm gonna have to square up, which gives you that much more time to secure cross side. Right. You know, I use this concept in all my passes a lot. You know, just getting the knees facing away from the side you're passing and it makes your job very difficult to bring back the guard. That's a good concept to remember. Yeah. Sean, I heard there's another position that we can use this leg work if I go for a foot lock. Yes. Uh, I'd love to show you. I'm showing you all my secrets, Jake. <laughs> I don't have any secrets. It's always about who's better at that time of that day. So th th the same position, you can use the same concept of getting basically the shin and making it disappear. When we're in a very similar position, you grab on top of my thigh and you shoot that leg up. When you feel that, I'm gonna lift my foot up and as soon as my shin disappears, I'm now on a knee through the middle pass. All I have to do is grab my underhook, Bring my knee to the side and slide it. You know what, that was great, but I think we ought to break it down for the beginner to show what I'm trying to do. Okay. 
Yeah, sounds good. Let's take a look at what you would do first and then uh, we'll take a look at how my leg work's gonna counter that. So when we're in a butterfly guard, my foot is back, so you really can't grab my foot, so you rest on grabbing my thigh. When you shoot this leg through, all of a sudden, oh no, my foot's in a very, yep, dangerous position for straight foot lock, X guard, all this stuff can ha start to happen here. So what I like to do is, as I feel this knee past my, my thigh line, I'm just gonna lift my foot up in the air. It's the same concept of making the shin disappear. So we're, we have a butterfly guard, you grab my leg. When I feel that knee leave, I'm just gonna lift my foot up. My shin disappeared. Now I've got my hook on the safe side. I'm able to shoot my underhook in. And now it's a simple pass where I just draw my right knee right across your stomach. And now I'm passing knee to the middle. So I'm just gonna slide out to safety and hopefully pass your guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just one step ahead of me there. Yeah, it just stays one step ahead. And you, the, the thing is, is that it's easy for me just to lift my foot. There's not really much movement required, just a lift of the foot and the foot, is, the whole leg is gone. Seems like it's just disappeared. Right. It's almost like I'm just giving you the pass. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice little secret. Uh -huh. You can kind of bait the guy. Yeah, oh man. Leg Anytime that leg shoots through, you just lift your foot and you're in safe position. Hmm. Can I try that? Of course. So you're going to be floating up here. When I grab this leg to shoot it through, I want you, as soon as you feel my knee past this line, right now, I want you to lift up your foot. There it is. Mm -hmm. And now I've got no foot lock. Right. Now to pass, I want you to make the underhook, slide the knee across the hip line, and you're good to go. And you're in a safe passing position. Give this a whirl again. That's it. Make an underhook and you're sliding out. That's great. Good example of what I call uh, just leg work. I call it leg work. If you mm -hmm. hear me coaching my students, you'll hear me yelling at them, leg work, leg work. A little egg beater type leg work and uh, it can come from all over. Like I said, it comes in many, many different positions and it's, it really seems to make some of the passing effortless. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I have to work on that. Uh, let's change gears for a moment and uh, talk about your DVD coming up. Oh yeah, well, uh, a lo lo long time ago now, it's been like, well, the move that got, it got accidentally made, they, they call it the Williams Guard. I didn't name it that. Uh, I'm not really fond of things named after myself, but it, it, the name stuck. So um, those people in the community that know what it is, uh, know that it, I made up this guard by accident in about 98, actually. It was like really close to the end of 1998, I think. People had been asking about it for quite a while, so I decided to make a DVD about it. So um, it was actually shot a, about a year ago, um, and uh, we were just a little maybe lazy on the production end or whatever. But you know, it, it got shot with uh, Hollywood Brazilian Jiu Jitsu patches on my back and stuff like that. And it, and uh, if you know, it wasn't a very good split that I had with that school. Um, and uh, so the opportunity came to reshoot it, so I, I, I wanted to reshoot it. I, it was important to me to reshoot it and, and uh, just with a you know, plain white gi and, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of start over and it was nice. So we got the, uh, I, I just reshot it about a week ago, so hopefully uh, it actually may be out mm -hmm. in the, within the next month or two. That's okay. what I'm hoping, yeah. All, right. yeah. All yeah. about the Williams Guard. All about the Williams Guard, kind of like what you can do, what is it, the attacks, the defenses that you have to watch out for, you know, and how to defend those defenses and some flow series is based off of it, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's just a little piece of the guard, really, like, you mm -hmm. know, but uh, if it helps some people, then great. Nice. Great. I see a lot of people get into it, but I see very little progress made after that. Yeah, so. yeah. I, it was kind of <laughs> accidental. I, I, I think I've seen some people th definitely try it. Mm -hmm. It's a good guard, you know. It's a, it's, I had a lot of success with it. Uh, I think it works gi, no gi, MMA, it'll, it'll work for everything, it'll work for uh, in every situation but in, involved in our sport. Mm -hmm. So hopefully if, if guys are toying around with that situation, they'll be able to go, oh, that's mm -hmm. the thing I'm missing or, you know, oh wow, that's what I can do. And, right. and hopefully people will see it, use that stuff and make new stuff and then show me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you right. know, hey, I got this off of... Your guard, hey, what, did you ever think about that? And prob chances are, probably, oh no, I didn't think about that, and cool, now I'll use that. Right. You know, so uh, one of the guys, uh, Chiyoshuko or Augusta Vieira, um, 
he, he taught me something off of it. You know, mm. I think Eric Vanderlei made it in, in Jacqueline's school, but he showed me, hey, Eric, what made this move? And it, and it worked, and it's mm-hmm. a choke off of it. So cool. I put it on there, and so it's, it's good. Nice, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, me too, thank you. So we got a couple really cool passes. Um, now let's, can we take a look at what to do when you're inside control? Yeah, sure. Let's, uh, let's have a look at a little counter I like to do when guys come up on a single leg, because sometimes you get a single leg and then there's a big fight, right? Okay. So uh, if you're gonna, if we'll just first of all take a look at how you would come up on a single leg and when and why. So if, if I've got cross side, first of all, let's go over a couple of basic rules of cross side. I call this head and arm cross side because I'm controlling your head and arm. This would not be a good time to go to your knees, obviously because I've got your head or I'm cross facing you. So this would be more of a time where you'd wanna go to your guard. However, if I switch to what I call head and hip, where I'm controlling your head and your hip, now I'm blocking the guard, so it's a good time for you to bump up and go to your knees. When you bump up, you create a little room, there goes the single leg, and all of a sudden now I'm in jeopardy here. Mm-hmm. So fancy little thing that I like to do is uh, I like to take that arm lock. So, And it's, it's kind of a tricky thing. It's, it doesn't really rely on a lot of control. It relies on some, some timing. Mm-hmm. But it's a very easy maneuver if we think about it. When you bump up to go through that single, here's your arm. Uh, if you could go right back on your back. So here's your arm, right? It's right, it's going to my leg. So if I just, I don't need my arms except for after I pass my legs. If I put my right hand up on the mat and try to make my legs relatively weightless, push down on my toes and bring my butt up in the air, all I have to do is turn around and sit down. And we're now we're in an arm lock position here. And I've, usually the speed and the timing leaves me to extend the arm before you're able to get that grip. Kind of like, what the heck just happened sort of scenario. That's a surprise. Yeah, so let's take a look at more more how it would happen in a a real speed. So, and you can do this from this position or in the on stomach. Again, if you Mm -hmm. go for a single leg, same thing. I'm right here. All I wanna do is I wanna make sure that when I sit down, I think about sitting on your shoulder blade not your shoulder. So I want to sit down on your shoulder blade, which gets me my hips behind your back. Uh-huh. And that's what's going to give me that arm. Let's take a look at it. So when you bring your hips up, I'm just going to bring my butt right behind your shoulder <laughs> blade. And we get a nice, quick little arm walk. Yeah. You're just not there. Right. So it can, it can be kind of an anti-wrestling defense there. So we can use jujitsu against wrestling in this, in this case. And I like to use wrestling against jujitsu and Jiu-Jitsu against wrestling. So mm-hmm. in this case, we can use a little craftiness to, to combat a good wrestler. So do you often like bait the guys? To... Never bait. My philosophy is that you never bait someone, right? Because you don't know how good they are at that specific thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always a reaction. Okay. You reacted and you got your arm in there. Now I have to react to that, that specific defense. Mm-hmm. My, I, I have a philosophy that you never ever bait someone to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not a good idea, mm-hmm. you know. If I have control on the cross side, I'll stay control on the cross side and I'll try to mount and I'll try to keep my position improving the whole time until I submit you. Mm-hmm. I won't let it go to bait you to come to the Don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's much more, it's a much conservative right. approach, right? Yep. But I think it's, it's safe, you know, and, and if we real, remember always Jiu Jitsu is for the street. Mm-hmm. Conservative and safety can really help you in that type of environment. You wanna have a look? Yes. Okay, Jake, now uh, when I bump up and I go to my knees, I want you to think about turning the other way. So we're gonna co- completely turn the opposite way of what you might think that you're gonna turn. So come back, come back to the cross side. Mm-hmm. When I get your leg, I want both hands posted up over my head. That's right. Now I want you to step backwards with your left leg and think about putting your butt up. There's the arm, there it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that is backwards. <laughs> it's completely backwards from what you what you want to do, right? right? Yeah. So that's what makes it a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Instead of running our the, the normal way, the conventional way, yeah. you're gonna completely spin. When you spin, nor, your hips are gonna be a little bit low, so you're gonna have to adjust your hips so they're right up here on my shoulder blade. Okay. And then the arm lock's just gonna appear there for you. Right. We'll just slowly build up our speed. So I come in. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Let's give it a whirl from a knee on stomach position now. Right. Same type of thing, right? You get the knee on stomach. One of my favorite defenses is to bump your hands forward. So again, I come out on the single. Oh boy, there it is. The timing feels so 
So nice, so effortless. Yeah, it's really a pretty cool move. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, combining jujitsu against wrestling in this case. Right. That's fun. Beautiful. So Sean, let's talk a little bit about gi versus no gi. Sure. Um, there's you know, so many people have different opinions about which is better and why, but what, what do you think about gi and no gi training? I think they're both great, you know, and I don't want to mean to sound like, oh yeah, it's easy to say both are great, you know. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I've always done both. At Henzo School, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that Henzo was, a, we were the first school to do both. Um, I think at that time, jiu-jitsu schools practiced with the gi, hmm. and uh, Henzo, we practiced, you know, three days with the gi and three days without. That's just hmm. how we had it from the very beginning. Um, so I, I, I think it's important to do both. I think if you're gonna choose one or the other, choose gi, for sure. Without question, choose gi. And the reason I say that is because experience. We had both at Henzo's, and the guys that only did no gi, they only got to a certain level. They would get to probably a, and it, and it was a pretty high level, but it was probably a, per, a high purple belt level, which is great, right? That's freaking pretty, pretty dang good. But. There, there was something lacking on the guys that just did no gi. And my, 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 kind of my thought is that, you know, people say, oh, the gi is faster, right? Oh, the no gi, it's slower. It's, it's, and you know, the, the movements, they're did, slower. Did you say right? gi is? Or no gi is faster. No gi is yeah, faster. Excuse me, yeah, right. no gi is faster. That's mm -hmm. what I meant to say, right? Yeah. And um, if you look at the movement, it is faster, right? Yeah. You're, you're slippery. Um, there's, it looks like more scrambles are going on and, and so forth and so on. But when you think about the amount and the complexity of the gi itself, there's way more things that you can do with the gi than you, can do, than you can't do without the gi, right? Mm -hmm. So there's chokes and there's, there's all the grips that you have to be aware of. There's way more sweeps. There's way, you know... There's a lot more of everything. So when you look at that, it's, it's what makes a good guy is not the speed at which they move, because that's just athleticism, right? It's the speed at which they think, mm -hmm. right? Or the, the processing that goes on in their brain. If you take a skill that has five, five skill sets in this thing, and you take something that has 50 skill sets in this, and you master both, the guy that has 50 skill sets, their mind is going to be able to process 50 things in the same amount of time that this guy can process five. So you're going to have a guy that is much more efficient and can think much faster or just be na in a natural state much faster when you're dealing with the gi than when you're not dealing with the gi. Um, so my argument's not so much as what's faster movement. No gi is faster movement, but the faster thought process is the no-gi guy. They've got all these problems to deal with. The faster process is the gi guy. The right? gi guy, yeah. There, there's so many more problems to deal with with the gi that if your mind's able to go, this is coming, 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 defend them all and now, I'm gonna get on my offense, versus this is coming and I'm gonna defend that and get on my offense. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's the guy that can process more, it's almost like a more intelligent type of training. It's more like chess, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I say if you're going to train one or the other, train with the gi. It takes like, if you only train with the gi, you can make your game very similar to, you don't have to use all the fancy grips, you know, mm -hmm. it can be the same. The gi game and the no gi can be very, very similar, but still the mind process of there is there with all the different chokes, all the different sweeps, all the, so much more going on, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you don't have to make your game sporty. Mm -hmm. So if you don't make your game sporty, you can adapt to nogi pretty easy, mm -hmm. pretty well. Um, just a sim simple, simple little arguments are like, you look at the Abu Dhabi. Who wins Abu Dhabi? It's totally. the guys that train with the gi. Mm -hmm. They're all because they take the gi off, and it takes them a few months to adapt to the different. Because you do have to grip a little different with with nogi. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be a moron if you said, "Oh, it's the same." It's not the same. Right. It is. It's a little different. You know, you have to control the body differently. Um, and, and also the guys that, that, that we came from that, I, that are my teachers, like Matt, Sarah and stuff, you know, he, look at the, his Abu Dhabi performance, mm -hmm. you know, and look at his world's performance. I don't know how many people won it, but he, or no, but he won the Brown Belt Worlds like, like easy. Mm. He killed everybody. Um, what year was that? It was 99. Mm. 
Like, I, I don't know how many people know that. Probably not a lot of people, but because right. it wasn't televised then. It was in Brazil, and mm -hmm. you know, and he, he just terrorized everybody. Mm -hmm. And then, what, two years later, he's, won, he's Abu, in Abu, Abu, Abu Dhabi finals. So, right. so uh, you know, so you look at the guys that are in the Abu Dhabi, which is the premier no-gi, and you, yep. you look at those guys, and it's gi guys. Right. Now, what so, do you see about the guy that, that trains no-gi with the gi? Do you see him, I mean, any standout? facets of his game at versus the guy that doesn't train no-gi? So a guy training no-gi when he transitions into gi? No, he trains both. Okay, like trains you both. when you train yes, both. Yes, I, I, I think there's a difference. Um, like if you're just training gi or you're just training no-gi, I think you're going to get much better when you just train gi than you just train no-gi. But if you train both, that's when I think that you become very, very good. What are some of those skill sets that are developed with no-gi training in your opinion? The skill sets that are trained, you know, the nogi stuff is you're gonna be have a little bit better body awareness control because you're not relying on grip anymore. Well, you are, you're gripping, um, but you're not gripping the material. You're not gripping a jacket, which in, then the jacket controls the body. You're learning to control the body itself through grips of the head and neck and the underarms and the underhooks, overhooks. Mm -hmm. You're dominating the hips more, so. You're, I think the human body control becomes a little bit better uh, as far as there's no, it's, it's, it's primary, right? You have to control the body. You're not mm -hmm. going to control the pants and then control the leg through the pants. Right. You know, you're you're going to control the leg itself. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that's a, a skill set that comes with the no-gi. Mm -hmm. The movement's a little bit different too. You know, Henzo one time said, the movement with the gi is circular and the movement with the no gi is square. <laughs> when he said that, I was a purple belt. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? But then it made sense. You know, it's, it's, it's a different type of movement, especially with passing and moving around. It's a little bit different type of movement. It's, it's more bum bum. It's a little bit more, well, just a little bit more square than mm. circular. Um, so I think the, the movement's a hair bit different. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, it, it's, harder to control somebody that's a little slippery. So mm -hmm. control gets very, very good. Your submissions right. get a little tighter because of the sliding out. Mm -hmm. But then again, your defenses get sloppy, right? Mm -hmm. You find yourself pulling out of something that if you put try that with a gi, it's not gonna happen. Right. You know, you, so you gain things and you lose things. Yeah, that's a good point. With the gi, you have to be very precise in your movements. Very precise, yeah, very precise. And your balance gets a little bit better with the gi because you can be swept all over the place. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think those are the. And I, I, I think uh, your scrambles get a little bit better without the gi, um, especially if you've if you've got wrestling experience or you you take it upon yourself to, to learn wrestling. I, I think you can get the, the scrambles down a little bit better without the gi. Mm -hmm. sure. Cool. Rolling, rolling. Okay, Jake, I'm gonna stop you one second right here because uh -huh. at my school, we always start on the feet. Do you? Yes. All right. So we're gonna start on the feet today. Okay. No uh, scissor legs takedowns, <laughs> no right? No scissor legs takedowns. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I believe you. So everybody has their finishes, right? That they don't. That's mine. Going. Uh, roll over, roll over the shoulder. Now, single leg. Yeah. <laughs> so Sean, the uh, 2010 Nogi Worlds is right around the corner. Yeah. Um, and it's been fun, you know, sitting by you watching all these events the past couple of years. What are your thoughts on this upcoming event? Well, I'm excited about it. It's always it, good to see everybody's leave it on the line, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, so 
you know, and, and I'm also looking forward to our end, you know, the production mm -hmm. and the, to, to, to do the commentary. It's I always, always have fun. Oh, it's always a blast. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, getting some good interviews with some people and, and uh, you know, I, th I think it's a, and, and, and also being online, I think it's a really nice, a nice uh, gesture. I think we were talking about the worlds and how we wouldn't, you weren't able to see it in the U.S., you know. And the uh, judo worlds. Yeah, 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 the judo worlds. And you were not even be able to see it in the U.S. You know, I was in mm -hmm. Canada doing a seminar, so I got to see it up there. Yeah. And it's the coolest thing ever to be able to see anything that you're interested in our sport. So, yeah. and, you know, now you can see it online and that's freaking awesome, yeah. man. Live. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Right. Because, you know, like, for, for me, anything that's involved in our sport, whether it's wrestling or judo or definitely Brazilian jiu-jitsu, like, I'll stay up to all sorts of crazy hours. I mean, they, yeah. they do the dream live on right. HDNet. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, I got trouble sleeping. You know, yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> up at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm, like, yeah, <laughs> finally this thing's starting, you know. I'm, like, a little like kid. 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but I'm, like, a little kid, you know. And uh, any anything that's relevant to our sport, mm -hmm. I, if it's live, yeah. it's more exciting to watch. Like, yeah. if I TiVo or record, like, the UFC and I missed it or something, it's never as fun to watch. Right. Like even if I say, don't, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me the results. When I watch it, I know it's not live, so it's never quite. And when you get to watch something live, it's just like it's a kid in a candy store. Right. And one frustrating thing is that we never know who's going to be there. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's exciting because you know last year uh, suddenly Josh Barnett was there. Yeah. You know, we didn't really know about that too far in advance. Yeah, I agree. I think it's uh, the anticipation of who's going to be there is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I hope all the the guy, the, you know. Bring it on, the big guys, come on. Right. Let's play, you know, everybody play. Yeah. So it's fun, it's fun to see. Cool, November 7th. Hope to see you I'm guys looking there. forward to it, yeah. yeah. Rolling, 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 Though my arms are swollen, I keep a me rolling, katsu. Yuki and jujitsu, sensei, yoshi, I'll never yawn until I die. I've learned Makiwara and Zaizen are the blessings I'll teach you. Join me each week as I train with different jiu-jitsu instructors and world champions. Two things are bound to happen. Number one, I will get submitted. And number two, both you and I will learn a thing or two. Rolling, 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 I'm Budo rolling, Jake, rolling, and this is Rolled Up. Uh...